Hi guys. If you're still a little bit annoyed, it's because I just spent, I guess, 10 to 20 minutes making um, things for your uh, education. And my uh, QuickTime recorder decided to uh, stop recording almost six minutes in, and I didn't know until I went to try to save the file and discovered that the uh, application had stopped responding. So, if I... I'm going to basically show you the finished products and explain how we got to that point. Um, if you have any questions, um, let me know and I will uh, cover uh, it with you um, in the comments. So, <clears throat> Okay, this is the first file that we did in the video, and I'll tr try to add uh, in Second Life uh, pictures as well. But this is the frame of the couch that uh, I'm using as a demonstration. Um, the AO, or um, pardon me, that's from earlier. The AO map, which is um, right here, is basically a shadow map. Um, ambient map, whatever the designer decides to call it. It's multiplied um, over the top. Uh, when I say multiply, it's a just like with overlay, it's a, another thing. Um, in fact, I go over mul what multiply is um, in the system shirt video that I filmed right before I did this one. Um, and what we did to accomplish what you're seeing here is that we brought in um, and shrank uh, a wood grain, uh, seamless wood grain texture. Um, and then a metal texture, which we had modified um, to be a little bit darker by uh, creating a layer of uh, charcoal um, color and then um, merging it with the already existing uh, brushed uh, stainless steel uh, image and then shrinking it down so it fits. So it's even though you can't really, even though you can't really see uh, the, te the texture uh, uh, details, the, uh, it's there. And then we opened up a new layer, well, you know, open as layers, uh, the pattern here, uh, which is a, a sunburst pattern. And then we took the, um, the ambient map and we brought it all the way up to the top layer and we hit multiply. And that's what causes this here. Um, I'm hoping, and this is an experiment because I haven't worked with this AO map yet, or the object in world, um, but I'm hoping that by doing it this way, the pattern will be continual all over the frame and it won't be uh, jumbled up. Now, um, the second thing that we did w was that we made this uh, couch padding, the cushions and, the, and everything, um, in the same pattern and I'm hoping that it won't look weird, but just in case it does look weird, uh, we made another set of a contrasting color, in this case orange, um, to go on the couch. Now the reason why I chose a contrasting color instead of a um, a, a complementing color, like t choosing the blue or the green that's already there, um, is to give it some more pop. Um, and if you are you have it in a room that has um, con uh, mono colors, you know, like uh, black and white or grays, it'll really give it the extra touch to um, to have it in the center as the focus of the room. And then we did um, the bottom not that remark remarkable um, because the bottom is not very rarely seen not very, not, it's very rarely seen, sorry and um, because of that um, and if you've ever seen uh, furniture, the un underneath of real furniture, um, you'll know that there's a uh, thin pattern, uh, thin not that a thin layer of um, fabric that's gray or black or white, uh, so that you can get into the body of the furniture without damaging much of anything. So that's what I was going for: is more realism by putting it that way. Now, if I wanted to go with extreme realism, then I would have gone and taken the pattern, the green pattern, and gone around. Uh, the corners a little bit where the feet are going to be sitting 
and like you know done some things to make it look like it's folded and it, but I'm not that detail oriented with things because um, in Second Life if things look good from the top and the sides and the back then the bottom really doesn't matter all that much um, unless it's fairly up in the air but since it's the couch it's going to be fairly low to the ground and it, I'm also going to be making a shadow pattern uh, to go on the ground uh, as well but I'm not I'm gonna show you how to do that in a uh, different video so hopefully this video actually saves um, and I will add another video that I'm talking over the top of showing you pictures from within Second Life because obviously my computer's acting up I will talk to you guys later okay hi everybody I'm back um, Took the, obviously, I took the picture. I also cleaned up my desktop, but I also took pictures of the couch in Second Life um, on my build platform, which is why there's a grid. So this is what the couch looks like, with no color, but still the shadow maps in place, um, or ambient maps, AOs, whatever you want to call them. Um, obviously, it's very plain, but very well done. Um, and then. This is what it looks like when I just put the uh, the starburst uh, frame. Obviously, it doesn't meet up as well as I was hoping, but it doesn't look bad. Uh, here's the back. See, so like I said, it doesn't quite it doesn't really meet up for the pattern to be completely like seamless all the way around. But then again, if you've ever looked at uh, real life furniture. Unless they use a seamless pattern and they're really meticulous, it doesn't quite do it either. So, I'm happy with how it turned out. Here's the other angle. It's my chair and my magic box and my food bowl for my cat. <laughs> Just in case you were curious about what that was. Anyway, then I put the, um, the Starburst pattern... Uh, padding on and I don't like the way it turned out but I took a couple of pictures so you guys could see uh, what it would look like and it's a little too off pattern for the rest of it uh, so I went and did the orange okay. okay. kinda cool kinda cool now if I did if I wanted this to look a little bit less smooth and a little bit more like fabric um, I can put a fabric texture underneath uh, the colors uh, but for now I'm going to leave it the way, as it is uh, may, might make new colors that have the texture but here's another angle for that see what I mean about the contrasting colors for the, uh, the orange to the green and the blue it gives it some pop now um, this is the bottom um, uncolored. You can see the legs are darker than I thought they would be. And the bottoms are metal. Um, though next time I will most likely just make them all wood um, since it's all one thing. Um, like I said, I hadn't worked with this before. It's not a bad thing because you can't really see it. Um, so, there's the bottom uncolored. Here's the bottom with the coloring. It's pretty cool. Alright. Now I took one more picture of it of the completely finished product at a different angle so you could see a little bit more of the, the shadows and everything in play. Um and I think the couch looks good. Admittedly it looks like um since there's no fabric texture on anything it does look like it's uh, like vinyl or pleather or you know whatnot but um, it's still a good couch and I think it'll be fairly popular so I saved it um, after putting a, what I call a creator's cube um, translucent creator's cube in it so that it's uh, when you look at it it says that I am the creator of this object so that's that's all she wrote for that part. Um, I will uh, try again to make another video 
um, showing some more uh, methods that I've come up with for um, using ambient maps and whatnot, and um, for different types of objects. Um, maybe even a how to use fabric texture next time. So I will talk at you guys later. I'm hoping this helped you uh, learn a few techniques and uh, makes you less uh, likely not to try to uh, buy kits to become uh, a seller of uh, mesh products. Um, talk at you later.